Thank you, John and Helen. My name is Ferran Owotomo, and I'm your lifestyle and wellness anchor. The first time I heard about temperaments was four years ago, and even though I forgot most of what I learned, something profound happened to me when I realized how important temperaments are in understanding people, and my hope is that you too can experience that same feeling of the cobble dropping, your aha moment. So, get out your pen and paper or your smart device because you don't want to miss anything our guest, Mr. Charles Aibona, the Executive Secretary of the Institute for Work and Family Integration, IWFI, will be discussing with us. Charles facilitates temperaments at the Married Couples Relationship Program, which, runs, which is run by IWFI. This program is designed as a weekend getaway for couples to rediscover true love and develop a plan for the success path to sustaining happiness in their marriage. Through IWFI's research, training, and advocacy, they provide solutions to the work and family challenges arising from the demographic shift in the workplace and rapidly changing technologies. Welcome, Charles. Thank you very much, Veron. I'm happy to be here. Thank you. I'm really, really happy to have you here with me today. So, as some may already know, temperaments is something that's been here for a very long time. Yeah, you're right. But it does not hurt for us to have a refresher <laughs> and for us to understand it in greater detail. And the first thing I want to understand, because this is, this is actually something that... That, that confused me slightly, okay. and I, I wanted to understand what is the difference between temperaments, personality types, character traits? Okay, you see, um, temperament, personality types, um, character, these are all concepts in psychology that are used to describe how people feel, how they think, and in a way, how they act. So in a way, they are all linked, okay. as it were. Okay. However, Temperaments and character are fundamental constituents of one's personality. Okay. So let's start from the basis, which is temperament. Yes. That is innate. You are born and with you're it. You're born with yeah. it. In your genes, in your wow. DNA. So those are more difficult, as it were, to manipulate, to change, or to mask. As so it what were. you're saying is, just like how I was born with brown eyes, I was born with this shape, I was born this color... That's the same thing as temperaments. But a bit higher, a higher level than that. Okay. Higher level that would even um, 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 sound like a mystery. That is a child already, a baby. You already see one that is active, one that is chatty, one that is calm, okay. one that is difficult and all that. Mm -hmm. They are acting that way because it's in their DNA, it's innate in them. Okay. Wow. So when I need physical um, attributes you are describing, we are talking about ways of acting, ways of behaving. Okay. So that's why it's in it. However, as they grow up, they learn things, they have life experiences and say, ah, this way of acting doesn't really benefit me or it doesn't work. Okay. Then you now, that now forms their character. That may right. change over, over, over a period because of education. For example, their likes and dislikes might change. Okay. But however, as they grow older, they, are not, they, they have different external circumstances because they get married, or because they're in this kind of job, or because they're in Lagos. So their behavior is added to it. Okay. So you now have the personality of that individual. So now say, this person is like this. So it's been a build up of, his, of temperament, on his character, and then you now have the personality because of who he is now. Okay, so let me just do a quick recap there. Okay. Temperament, I'm born with it. Yeah. Character. I form along the way based on my experiences and influences. Yeah, education, learning, yeah. Okay. Personality is a further develop, development of my character as a result of the changes I go through as a human being in life. Yeah, you're right. So I can change my personality, I can modify my character, but I cannot change my temperaments. Yes, precisely. However, your personality is... The, it stays longer with you, as it were. It's a more stable thing than character, and temperaments are more permanent. So, what are temperaments? Temperaments are 
at, let, let's say there are, let's talk about the types, man, you understand it better yes. that way. To say there are four types of temperaments, okay. majorly. Okay. You know, okay. those um, that sanguines that are cheerful, happy, easy go lucky, center of the party, and all that. Those are our people, right? Okay. <laughs> then you have the, the cholerics. These are born leaders. You know, okay. they want to have their way. They um, think things through quickly. They are decisive. They are ambitious mm. Mm. and all that. Those are the cholerics. Mm. Then you have the melancholics. These are, uh, they are quiet people. Mm. They, they pay attention to details. They are uh, extremely orderly. As it right. were, you know, and then finally you have the, the phlegmatics. Is uh, they don't desire, they don't want much. They are just okay. They want peace in the world. They want to be left alone. They want to, um, um, they want peace. They they don't. They are not ambitious about many things, you know, and they are very they are very rational. So these are actually the the four temperaments, and is being categorized since way back, way back, even mm. before before Jesus Christ. <laughs> Before Jesus Christ was born, yes. <laughs> it's a long, long time ago. Yeah, it is, it is. Is it possible for one person to have two or more temperaments? Actually, um, these are the major temperaments. People have a combination of, of, um, of them. Mm -hmm. And then you could have that the major temperament is this, mm -hmm. and then you have the other one as the minor temperament. For example, right. so I I I say I'm um, eighty percent um, sanguine, and then twenty percent phlegmatic. Right, I would probably say I'm a mixture of phlegmatic, melancholy, and sanguine. Okay, okay. But is that is is that really possible? Because sometimes I can be the life of the party. Sometimes I'm very reserved, and I just want to be left alone. So is it possible for me to have all three? Okay, then we'll, then we'll have to look at the percentages of all this. Right. Yes. Right. Yes, because you see, um, people do stuff because of circumstances, but we're talking about the, the flexibility, the ease mm -hmm. of doing it. Um, people have to speak because it's, it's, a, it's a call to duty. Mm -hmm. But however, people, one will find it easy to do, happy to do it, while the other one will have to rehearse, psych himself, psych himself, psych herself to get it done. They are both doing it, but one has um, a way of doing it. He's, he's happy to do it. He's doing it easily because mm. it's in his gene. Mm. And one is difficult because it's, it's nowhere to be found as it were. <laughs> wow. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So this, this is actually a lot to take in. And it, it, really, needs, it really needs a bit of, a bit, a bit of fleshing out. So let's, let's look at four individuals what's what's your favorite pastime do you like football do you like what are the things you enjoy to do can we pick four individuals that people generally know and put them in these four temperaments four individuals okay um celebrities you know public figures okay Okay, now for for that, you know, you, you all might be judging from what you see on I see. On, on TV. I see. Uh, yes, and which could be play acting. <laughs> very true. Very play true. acting very as true. it were. So very in their true. individual lives, they are they are different, really. You know. Ah. Oh. So, um, but to say that the temperament at times lead to different professions. People taking different professions. How so? So you find um, sanguines because they are life of the parties. They could be MCs. Okay. They are very creative. Okay. They could be comedians. Okay. Because they think things in, in bright colors. Okay. You know. Then you have the melancholics who might want to, be, uh, since they pay attention to the details, they want, might want to be at their decks as it were, crutching the numbers. Right. So you have them in finance. Right. You have them like that. Then, of course, cholerics, these are leaders. Right from university days, you see, most of these are leaders. Um, you see that right from the university days, they're already being... They're already standing out. Yeah, from yes. even primary school. Yes. Want to be class rep. Yes. Want to be um, yes. um, the senior prefect. Yes. Want to be in SUG. Yeah, want to yes. be this, you know. Yeah. Why people are like, I just want to be left alone. And here you are trying to get this position of um, authority, as it were, wanting to lead. Mm. That's the more I want to collect the notebook. For me, I just want to just be alone. 
So you see, they already have, it will lead them to doing different, different things. Different things. So yes. on a side sidebar, yeah. what this has just made me realize is that when it comes to parenting, yeah. it is important for parents to understand the temperaments of their children. Absolutely. So that they can push them in the right direction. Absolutely. And not end up being counterproductive to that child's success in the future. Precisely. Precisely. You need to know. And then with that, to be able to develop their strengths mm. and help them overcome their weaknesses. Mm. Because for the sanguines, they are quite forgetful. They, don't, they like variety. They want things to be changing. Mm. So, I mean, they are giving a toy today and then it's, they, they are so excited. But in a in few hours, they've already lost interest in that toy and they want something new. Something else. So you have to say, okay, this one is like this. The assignment is going to forget. Okay, this has, so you note it down. Write it down. I need to remind him. Right. And things like right, that. Right. Right. Yeah. This. This is. This is really, really an eye opener for me. So, what? What? Which of these temperaments are more compatible? Okay. When now, we talk about. When we talk about. Let's narrow it down to relationships. Okay. You know, um, okay. between man and wife. Okay. Or boyfriend and girlfriend. Okay. Which of these temperaments are generally more compatible? Okay. Now. Um, most experts put it in, in, this, in this way, which I like, in three categories. Okay. Now, the ones, temperaments that are people of the same temperament mm -hmm. are, are, are a recipe for disaster. For if example, the same, the same temperament, yes. That is, um, if you have a choleric mm. in relationship with a choleric, mm. they are both leaders. So they both have to be following the same goal. Mm. Otherwise, they are going to fight themselves to death because they both want to lead, mm. as it mm. were. And each one is always right because mm. he has thought it through and feels his position is right. Mm. Then you have the sanguines. Both of them are going to be talking and chatting, and no, none of them will listen. One has to listen. So he's telling about his story. He wants to tell you. The other wants to tell about their own story. So mm. then you have the melancholics. They are going to just, as it were, bore themselves to death. Wow. There's not going to be color. There's not going to be life. Wow. You know, everything will be orderly, but boring, wow. as it were. Then finally, if you have two flag, they are going to just um, um, cry themselves to death to <laughs> because they, they, they don't want much from life. They are just down, and everything is pessimistic, and each one is just, two of them are just giving themselves pessimism, and they are going down. So we go to that stage of um, opposites. Yes. Now, apparently, opposites seem to attract, which we see in relationship. Yes. Because you see in the other some things you admire because you cannot do it. Mm. You're always coming. You see this guy active, laughing. At. So there's a tendency to, to attract. Yes. Yes. So, but however, what happens afterwards is you're you are attracted to the person. You get into a relationship with the person. You marry the person. But now that he's now your spouse, you want to change the person to now be like you. Oh, wow. To say, hey. Sit down at home and watch TV with me, and it's like, really? <laughs> I mean, where are you going to? <laughs> and it sounds <laughs> like me. <laughs> so, like, hey, but I mean, you you like me because I was no, no, now because it's now. So, which we say at the at the institute, you shouldn't try to you don't try you don't change the market. What you should do is you adopt your product to to fix the market. So, the two extremes, um, it should also be avoided. So, a sanguine shouldn't. Um, get married or a relationship with um, a, a uh, melancholy because he is scattering the, the house and the other one is arranging the house. He doesn't see anything wrong in the things he's doing and he's forgetful, he's very weak willed, so he's always doing the things wrongly and he's not able to control himself. And the melancholy is taking careful account of all the things, all the wrong that is being done to her and she's not mentioning it. And because she do, they don't speak much, as it were, and they feel that everybody should know. You should know that this is wrong, and they are keeping and they are keeping that. So you are just going to have a lifelong uh, <laughs> a relationship of, of issues. Okay. Then you have the final one, which is of the um, the two other extreme I want to mention is a choleric, you know, in relationship with a phleg, a phlegmatic. Choleric are ambitious. They want to rule the world. They are goal oriented, and you have the other one that is not um, and doesn't want much from life and seeing only the dark side of things. You don't want to be at home every day with somebody that is telling you how this is not going to work, how it's not going to work. Mm. It's going to work. 
because I see it working already, as it were. Then the last one is really, okay, so we avoid this, these two opposites. Then finally, mm. you now say, okay, complementarity is key. Mm. So you now say sanguine goes along with the choleric mm. or, a, um, or a phlegmatic, and then the phlegmatic go away with um, choleric or mm. with the sanguine, and so complementarity is key. Wow. Wow, that is, that is actually a lot to digest. It really, really is. And the thing that I would say, that I know we can't talk about this, but what I would say is, it sounds to me like understanding temperaments yeah. and how they impact relationships is actually something that should be part of the school curriculum. Mm. Because if you understand your temperament yeah. from early on, yeah in life, yeah. you're able to make better relationship choices and amend your interactions and your communications better to get better results. Precisely. You would know yourself. You would know why you act the way you do. You will know your strengths, your weaknesses, and you will leverage on your strengths and you try to overcome your weaknesses. You become a better person. Knowledge of temperament is so key and so fundamental in everything you do, at work, at home, in parenting, and if you want to take it down to being in the school curriculum, let's go there. Let's have it there. It should. It should. <laughs> if the government isn't going to do, us, do it for us, maybe the private schools can do it for mm -hmm, us. Mm -hmm. Or maybe we can start having, you know, um, lesson teachers who teach about these types of things. Yeah. I, I think these are things that would make the world a better place. Yeah, it would. So in a very short time, I think we have been able to really touch on some really succinct issues around understanding temperaments. So I would like to ask you to please give us three of the most important takeaways that you want us to, to, to keep at the back of our minds when we're interacting with our, our lovers, and other types of relationships moving forward? Okay, now I would say, first of all, is one should understand himself by knowing his temperament. Then you understand your partner, you understand your spouse. Because you understand him or her, you, want, you will know why they act the way they do. Mm. And love follows knowledge. Mm. So marriage is actually to be enjoyed, not endured. So you are not enduring him, as it were. You love him, you begin to cherish the way he acts. And it helps you to communicate, to say that she, she is melancholic, she wants details. To say, I'm coming home later. They don't want that. I'm coming home in the evening. No, you have to say the time mm. or things like that. So it helps you to know yourself, you know the, understand the spouse, and you are able to, to communicate. So... Thank you so, so much, really. Thank you. Thank you. This, this, is, this, is, this is extremely insightful. And we, we have come to the end of my segment. It always goes by so, so quickly. I mean, we, we've only you know, just begun. We've only and just I mean, begun. I mean, yes. we're out already. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, but before we go very quickly, I will like to say um, IWFI, is on Instagram yeah. as IWFI online. You guys run your your marriage couples, couples retreat. Yeah. Um, I would implore all our viewers to actually go and find out more because I do believe that these are things that could really, really help in making the world a better place. If we have better relationships, the world is, is a better place. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Farah. Up next with us is Dolly Phillips, our fitness expert. <laughs>